So I'm going to do uh, two techniques on her. I'm going to do kind of a pinwheel and I'm going to do a uh, minking. So I'm just going to section this hair off on the ridge that I feel that it needs to live on. And actually I'm going to do three techniques in here. I'm going to do a pinwheel, I'm going to do a minking, and I'm going to do a sombre. Sombre to me is not soft balayage. I know that some people call it that, but I, my sombre, which was originated long before everybody came, started coming out and calling it the sunbre and the sombre, and you know everybody just loves the bray word, is that uh, my sombre is side. And some of my work uh, that you'll see that uh, a lot of times, like when I say, I really enjoy um, letting energy become part of your workmanship quality. So I could very easily take a long-haired guest such as yourself and make one side a lot more energetic than the other. And that to me is what I call a sombre. So it's a side energy, okay? Now you can do with it as you wish, that's just what Candy calls it. All right, so pinwheeling is, uh, and I have a video. Um, by the way, I have tons of cutting and coloring videos uh, all brought to you this weekend for a measly $40. I highly recommend that you get them. Uh, train the trainers, they're in your bags. Um, but nonetheless, those DVDs uh, are, are really great tools for you to go back into. But like when I look at haircuts like yours, Renee, right? Renee has what I call kind of a pinwheel. And what I mean by that is it just falls kind of like as if it were a wheel. You know, the hair doesn't, we don't know where it starts, we don't know where it stops. Even here we have kind of pinwheeling. Even here we have pinwheeling, we have pinwheeling here. So the circular motion in which that is how I'm gonna read those breaks. So sometimes you'll see me do pinwheeling techniques with highlights, also with low lighting. So reading that is very, very important. Now here, Natalie's hair, I just uh, went over it with a 571 and a 671 Wella. I did 10 volume on the regrowth and I did 20 volume on the ends. This is a virgin, beautiful, natural head of hair. And I went over it with a permanent hair color. Why? Tonality, saturation to really sit it down. So even though we say, oh, she has like in melting purposes, I can, I just wanna make sure that I clarify that remember when I said I'm using semis and demis when I'm doing what? I'm shifting, I'm shifting. But if I was going to melt Jenna's hair here, I, of course I could use a permanent hair color. This is not a shift if I paint all of this dark and then just wanna paint the ends, is it? No, what it is is saturation that I'm looking for. So don't want you to think that I wouldn't use a permanent color to get this effect. As a matter of fact, I probably use a permanent color more on this than I would a demi-permanent. Why? Because one is soft and one is hard. And if I'm trying to create a hard line, which no offense, it's not a hard line, she's got gorgeous hair color, um, I want it to have strength, right? So that's not a shift. So shifting's when I'm converting foils, when I'm shifting in lines, and I'm shifting regrowth and bad markings in the hair. Does everybody understand that? So I really wanna clarify that. So on Natalie's hair, I went ahead and did a 10 volume on the regrowth so that it was darker, and then a 20 volume to the ends on a natural level seven to make it richer and darker. Okay? Good? All right, so still coming back in, same quality. So what you're gonna see with this is I'm going to live just very lightly in this hair as I kind of pinwheel around and I start to think about the break of her. And did you see me move my body position from one side to the other, right? So. That's why I wanna teach you about ridge painting. So if I'm painting on this side of the ridge, I'm over. If I'm painting on this side of, you know, or I'm above. And if I'm on this side of the ridge, I'm over. Does everybody get that? 
Because if I just pick this up and I do straight down like this, what am I gonna have? Lines, right? So the goal is for me to just create softness like that. Okay? Okay? So you could see how I could be doing a light and a dark and a light and a dark. Okay, so read this haircut. Where does this energy live here? Look, there's your peak. You see it? There's where it lives. So if you just read your haircut, you too can know exactly how to paint what's going to automatically, um, and her little hairs are falling out here because I keep moving her. It's living where you automatically know now that's where you want to paint that. Right? So now, does that start into... So even on short hair, you're being extremely, you're being extremely cognizant about where you're placing your highlights. Okay, so that's it. That's all I'm doing there. Now I'm gonna come in here on this side and earlier today, I taught you about different partings for different reasons. So in this case, I'm going to go exactly with the haircut. Now I have to ask myself, do I want anything there? No. So I'm gonna go a little bit higher using the corner of the eye coming straight up and I'm going to do a little bit there. Now that seems to start to speak to me, Wayne when you were talking about the peaks and the valleys. So now it's very easy, that starts to speak to me more. I open that hair up and you can start to see where that hair begins to talk to you, right? Okay, great. So now we're gonna come in. I see the ridge there and I can just pinwheel around. And basically pinwheeling is just finding, see how I turn my body? So that streak is going on that ridge. And then I'll just put one right here for just so I look cute. Ha ha. Okay, and now I'm beginning to pinwheel around the hair. So reading, 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 reading. That is so important. All right, now I'm gonna come on this side. And you notice I didn't part from the top of the head to the top of the ear. So now I'm gonna come in on this side and I'm going to read that. I'm gonna read that part of my haircut. I'm gonna read that and I'm gonna to say to myself, self, where do I want my hair color to live? And so as a trainer, a really great thing for you to do is take 10 clips, tiny little set clips, and if you're training in class, you tell your students, I want you to walk up to this hair and I want you to put the first streak in with your clip. So you would grab it, you would clip it. The next person in the class would walk up, they would grab it, they would clip it. The next set of eyes would grab it and clip it. And then do 10 little clips in the hair to teach the eye to understand ridges. Okay? Because that's where that has to live. Stand up, please. So, sorry, Anna. <laughs> so turn around, Anna. So do I want that color to live on this part of the ridge, on the highest part of the ridge, or under it? And that's what we have to learn to train our eye to do. Because how many times have you done a foil, and I know this has happened, she has a great ridge right here, beautiful ridge coming down in the front of her hair right here, my little blonde right here. How many times have you done a foil and it, you put the low light in and it covers your highlight? You're like, oh crap, gotta restyle that. <laughs> gotta, gotta figure out a different way to cut that bang because I just put the dark in the peak and not the valley. I mean, uh, I put the dark in the peak and not the valley and I put the, the light in the valley and not the peak. Okay? so. I'm just going to read that here. Here's this ridge there. I'm going to come around. All right, and now I'm just going to come around there and just do a light one there. Okay, so this looks kind of 
not a big deal like, oh, Candy's gonna do a few little brochet pieces here. No, I'm just showing you what a pinwheel is. Now I'm gonna come back and I know that it would be a travesty for me to paint that right there because I can see through my window and I know that that's gotta stay dark, right? I mean, that would just be, that would just make her, my work look bad. So I'm gonna leave all that dark. I'm gonna come in over here. I'm gonna take another section this way and I'm gonna do just a little crocheting here. And I'm going, I'm trying to turn her so that we can see tail comb, very important, because when this dropped out, it's tangly, so I'm going to lift it up and organize it. So if you want to know uh, if sometimes you are unorganized, sometimes you got to get your hair organized. So that's a very important part. So now I'm going to take this and I'm going to crochet these ends because I'm going to start to get stronger here and I want to have a little bit more strength. So that's going to be that end. Then I'm going to pick this up and I'm going to come on the outside ridge and I'm going to turn her a little this way. Sorry, I got to get it grabbed. I need food. My hands are starting to shake because I need food. Okay, so here we go. So I'm on that side and then I make it this way. I bring that together and I put down together. Okay, so now I'm following the pattern of that haircut. You see I made those two together in the middle. You see that? Okay. Now, remember, I could be melting, I could be shifting, I could be doing all that. All right, now I'm going to take out my money piece in the front, and I'm gonna pull that away. And I can see it, can I? Read the haircut. Can you visualize in your eyes right now where the ridge is? and where the color needs to live. So right now I can visualize that so I can see it. So I ask myself, am I gonna paint down on it? Am I gonna paint back on it? Am I gonna paint forward on it? What do you think I'm gonna do? Down, down. Cause look, this is not Put your sunglasses on top of your hair. I have to have a, a snooky doo doo going up into the, you know. Sorry, my Jer Jersey folks, but no, just kidding. I, I don't want a highlight to live here. So I would not paint it back. So where I want my highlight to live is in my money piece. And so I gotta really get good and organized here because this is, this is where I make my money. And the importance of this, and I'm gonna paint it for the camera, for the money piece. So painting the money piece is important. And right here, I come right across that. And then I bring this together with it. And you see how I left that dark at the scalp? And I'll show it to you in just a moment. And I bring it around, and I'm really making sure my shoestring is together. I'm really making sure that saturation is there. I lay it into the reservoir. And without jerking this out, I'm gonna turn for you. Strength, skimming, dark. You ever see the highlight? It's like so heavy right there and you're like, why did I paint it so heavy right there? It's because you didn't leave any dark around it. So that will give you the ability to have that plastic. This is a candy shawl technique. Okay, did y'all catch that? 
So that's how I just pick it up and hold it over. Can't find that on YouTube. <laughs> okay, be still. All right, one more. But maybe now you can, because I'm filming it. Okay, so watch this. Corner, corner. Okay, so why would we try to lay a straight piece on a corner piece? So take your corner of your perforated wrap and wrap it over like so. Does that help you? Okay, now, now we're going to mink. So imagine if I had a dark color here and I wanted to do dark at the base, um, I could do that. And Natalie's super tall, so I'm going to begin to tease this hair up. And tease this hair up. And when I lived in Europe, when I was a teenager learning highlighting, the first time I ever saw this, I almost wet my pants because it freaked me out, because I was not prepared for that. Okay, I see a ridge there that I want, because it fell out, so it bless you, so it told me. So when something talks to me, I, I listen. Hair talks to me all the time. So I'm gonna come in, and I'm gonna find that ridge right there. and I'm gonna paint it. Okay. All right. So you missed it before. Corner, corner, wrap. Okay. So I'm gonna take that and I'm gonna tease that up. And this is also, this technique is also in my videos and you may have seen this. And you notice I don't add that to it. And the teasing is going to make the painting be seamless. Now, if I had a base color, I could add that base color all around, right? and I could create this sombre effect. So now I just take this and I begin to paint the ends. Excuse me? <laughs> well, what this is, is thinking outside of the box. Because if you have teasing, you know you're gonna be protected. And it allows you dry brushing. dry brushing. Saturating. Oh, it's okay. Let's pick it right back up. Saturating. Now I'm going to turn. You, you're not. I am. And I'm going to make sure this underneath is where I want it. And then I'm going to dry brush and saturate and voila. Okay, so you can see how that is going to become a beautiful sombre on the side because I'm gonna have dark 
and energy coming over like a waterfall. I'm gonna have my money piece, my ridge there, my dark here, and my dark there, my break there. No highlights lower than the occipital bone. And there you have brocheting, pinwheeling, riding the ridge, minking. You understand? Lots of different techniques all made up in one.